Hi, I'm Doug Eldridge, and we're back in Washington, D.C. for another installment of the DLE vlog, found at DLEmedia.com, the new division of the DLE agency. Like all of our vlogs, this is shot exclusively through the use of Flipcam. When we last spoke, we were talking about the failed drug test of three-time Tour de France champion Alberto Contador. This wasn't for erythropoietin or any type of anabolic steroid. It was for clenbuterol. Curious to some, since clenbuterol is typically associated with being an asthmatic medication. What you don't realize is clenbuterol is also used in some circumstances as a weight loss drug or as a weight management drug. If you think about it, these are two features that are rather key to tour riders. Breathing as easily as you can and being as light as you can We're in the high Alps of France or the Pyrenees of Spain. Having said that, Contador failed twice. His A sample and his B sample were both opened and tested on site at a German testing lab. The test results came back following the tour's second rest day. The concern is, well, several things. First of all, Contador was notified of this news two months ago, but the UCI, the International Cycling Union, never made this, these results public. Number one. Number two, Contador, the onus is now on him to prove his innocence. Now, to some, you would say, well, he failed two drug tests. What's, what's the ambiguity? What would be the problem? He's proven guilty once, proven guilty twice. We have a system of checks and balances. Yeah, the onus should be on him to show his innocence if he failed two tests in a row. But according to Contador, this was not blatant ingestion of a performance-enhancing drug, but rather tainted Spanish beef of all things. There's really only been one close case of parody in history. Ironically, it took place in the form of a table tennis player who also tested positive for clenbuterol. Now, if you're laughing, stop. Table tennis players need help, too. Here's the catch. When the previous table tennis player tested positive for clenbuterol, he was able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was meat contamination in others that received the meat from the same restaurant from the same region where he imbibed the meat and produced a top positive test result. Here's the problem. Contador can't do that. Nobody from Alberto's team, all of whom ate the same Spanish beef, was pulled for a random drug test at that stage in the tour. So there is no corresponding analytical evidence to rely on. Additionally, his was the only team that ate that beef. So in effect, Alberto has a one-off drug sample, the likes of which you cannot substantiate because it could have been a particular head of cattle from a particular herd from a specific ranch in one individual part of Spain. In short, it's going to be effectively impossible for Alberto to replicate this type of finding. So, if it sounds like we're on a treadmill conversation, it's because we are. We're coming back to the same point over and over. The fact that Alberto Contador has effectively failed two drug tests taken from the same batch sample, and he has no plausible defense. But the onus, given the checks and balances system or pseudo-juridical system of the UCI, dictates that Alberto Contador must now prove his innocence. It's a steep battle and something that we're going to revisit. But what I want to touch on now is the fact that this is a David and Goliath battle. By that I mean Contador is on his own. Because he does not have the backing and the strength that comes with the riders union. Effectively a system to step up and say, we are going to represent the interest of this individual rider because his interests are our interests. Because if it were not him, it could be me. And if not me, it could be you. So we all stand to benefit and we all stand to lose if our brother in sport is convicted absent ample backing. So where do we go from here? Cyclists don't have unions. The NFL, the NBA, the NHL, MLB, even USA Track and Field are all unionized bodies. And the whole point of the union concept is to provide that strength in numbers, to destroy the David and Goliath parody that comes of one versus a hundred. Now you can say, well, Alberto is certainly not a man short on means. He has a $4 million base salary and ample endorsement opportunities to boot. So he certainly has deep pockets to mount the defense he's going to need to do. But throwing money at a problem, as we've seen throughout American jurisprudence, does not produ produce a substantial result. If anything, it makes your problem get worse. So my concern is that the riders must organize. They must find commonality of purpose and strength in voice. And you only find that through strength in numbers. So while the UCI and riders consider things from biological passports, 
to licensing and credentialing agents. I implore them, let's start with USA Cycling and move forward. Let USA Cycling serve as an example to fundamentally organize a riders union, and to create rider protest, and to create salary parity, and to give these riders a voice. So whether it's Contador, or Armstrong, or Landis, or whoever's taking the stand, so to speak, nobody wants to feel as though they're standing alone. I'm Doug Eldridge, signing off for the DLE Agency, encouraging you to check back soon. This is a topic that has a lot of legs, so to speak. We'll inevitably go around and around. Check back soon.